because this is one of the hot topics that's going on. And, you know, you being from Cali and everything, and, you know, we speaking on the goofy stuff that we hear on the Internet and seeing on the Internet. And, you know, I know where I'm going with this. Well, this situation here with take pay, you know, um, hot take T-Pain saying what he said about Tupac, you know what I'm saying, about him not being literally yeah. that third. And you work with the man. You see? And yeah. You see, man, my opinion of Tupac, and I'm basing strictly on my interactions, is that's a real nigga looking back at me. And he was doing real nigga shit when he was around me. And I judge niggas based on how I feel when I'm with them. When they hanging around me, the nigga's real energy was real nigga energy. And in regards to Pac and lyrics and whatnot, Pac talk to your heart, homie. Pac talking to your heart. Now, whatever you consider to be this, that, and the third, that's the person. That's the personal opinion. But you know, I'm mean, Pac talking to your heart. When Pac said what he said, he said that shit hits you in a certain place. He he touching your soul with his words. So you know, if all you want to hear is some slick words, then maybe Pac ain't the person for you. But if you want to hear some shit that's gonna touch your soul, Pac is for you, homie. And I don't think it'll be no different today. Straight up. I, th- I think that's why I would pop. Because when people look at it from the, the quote-unquote technical bar aspect, pop didn't have to be lyrically technical in order, like you said, Prodigy, to touch your soul. I mean, when you just look at some of the songs, I'm not going to name, you know, the, 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 go-to, the go-to ones. I'll talk about songs like, you know, trap. I'm talking about how if you hear me. I'm talking about, you know, all those joints, man. I mean, temptation. You know, how long will they mourn? Yeah. You know, I mean, even on. I mean, but I mean, if you really want to talk about even getting busy lyrically, what he did on "Got My Mind Made Up," and he was going up there with some lyrical heavyweights and was getting busy. With oh no, him. pop! Because pop know how to deliver a verse on your ass. Yes. Yes. You know, he know how he going to take that verse and the way he deliver it, it's going to touch your ass in some form or fashion. He's going to, especially, you, he, you're not going to miss him on no track for sure. Especially uh, that Digital Underground on his second album, when he, especially uh, what was up, what's up with the love, you know, when he had his verse up there. I mean, yeah. he, you know, he had a presence that, um, you know, was just. I mean, I, I never you know get what, into the discussion. See, of, what bothered me more about that comment was he was talking mm-hmm. about pot like he was like slouch, like he's some scrub or something. And I was like, hold on, if we talk about people that will lyrically annihilate him, like what are we talking about within this sector? Are we talking about? The NBA young boys, we talk about um, NLC, NLE Chopper. Exactly. What metrics, what metrics are we using? What metrics are we using? Island boys? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, because he just, he, uh, yeah he that's at, the world we living in right there. <laughs> like, what are we doing here, man? Because I was thinking with man. Tupac, he... He went at niggas at they prime. Like, I'm talking about Prodigy from Mob Deep, Prod. AZ, Nas. Yeah, <laughs> Prodigy from Mob Prodigy from Mob Deep was no joke on that mic. So you talking about in pocket? The thing about Pac, he didn't give a fuck who he was. He going at you if you if you piss him off. He going at that ass. He don't give a damn how dope of a lyric. Shit, he went with Biggie Smalls. Come on, shit. I think he felt like, you know, he felt like the Biggie ain't. Biggie is one that they consider, I mean, a lot of New Yorkers consider him to be the best. So, you know, man, please, it all depends on what your taste is. But you know damn well that Pac wasn't no joke on the mic, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, he wasn't no joke on the mic. And we live in the goofy hot, we live in the goofy Hot take culture, man. Just like when we had John Morant saying he could cook Jordan. I'm like, you could cook Jordan a dish, but you ain't cooking him on the court. 
Look, man, I think that argument done been fucking had. It then came and went, and you know that shit happens every fucking time a new um, generation of players come. Eventually, LeBron James going to retire, and in five years after he retired, he ain't going to be getting the props and respect that he deserves. It's the same way with Kobe. Kobe don't get the respect he deserves no more. You know, he don't get the respect he deserves no more. I mean, it's just every time some new players come, they got to move some of the OGs out the way. You know what I mean? To give these other players their respect. But the one person that ain't, I don't know if he ever going to be moved. Jordan is never going to be removed. because he, he was too much of a dominant motherfucker. Like, how can you motherfucking say anything about a person that didn't won as many times as he didn't won? You just, it's hard to argue it. Yeah, you can argue it, and I mean, I guess you're supposed to feel like you're the best, right? At whatever you're doing, I mean, that's normal. But the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. And it's the same with the rappers, dude. I mean, I see a lot of shit now where people talk shit, negative shit about Eminem and his rapping. You know, look, man, it's just the more time go by, the more they're going to find shit to talk about or complain about or whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? But what they, uh, Eminem, but you know what, he's, still, he's yeah. still one of the GOATs, one of the GOATs. You know, and that's where, and that's a, that's a great segue, Prodigy, on the uh, on the bridge, an analogy between athleticism and uh, hip-hop in terms of lyrics and the greats in both aspects of the culture because – we all come from that era. King and me were talking about this earlier today. Um, when you look at that era that Jordan and all the niggas came through, that was a rough era. That was goddamn fucking brawl era. This was yeah, you know, a you time know, when you can literally to... throw a motherfucker down and get away with it. You know, yeah. you can barely touch <laughs> players nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but see, even the yell at them is a technical game, foul. Yeah, right. I, I mean, in the game now, and we got to be real because it's gotten the way the music has kind of, the industry has kind of gotten. It's, they they want it more presentable for the public. They want it more friendly. Uh, the game is not as physical now as it was 30 years ago. Even 15 years ago, it's not as physical. Um, the marketability in terms of what they want, in terms of scoring, in terms of being able to promote the stars, you know, niggas get beat up all the time on the court. You know, they they can't promote it. <laughs> you know, they they want something that oh, is aesthetically right. appealing to the audience. You know, they're thinking about the babies. You know, we got to make this a family affair. Or we were like, dude, we just want to be entertained and watch these dudes go at it. And with the industry as well, um, it's the same thing. Um, to get back to King's point about what Ja Morant said, Ja is a hell of a player. He is not Hello. cooking Jordan in this. He is not. He is not cooking Jordan in his prime. That is not happening. We no. saw. We saw what Mike did to people when they got him mad. Mike would invent reasons that they got that he was mad at them and would cook them. And Mike did it alone. to some of the. <laughs> and Mike did it to other legends, super legendary motherfuckers like yeah, legend, legend, legend. Let's talk about it. That he was Let's shitting on. It. So. You know, say what you want to, man. The truth, the proof is the proof. Now, if somebody come along and win more championships, and if they do it in a dominating fashion, we can have that conversation. We can have that conversation. But right now, ain't nobody even close to this dude. And the, and the thing is, Mike, Not didn't even close. Talk, Mike didn't even talk back in the day. Mike never even – you. and the thing is, you're hearing these young boys do all this trash talking now. These boys back in the day, Mike – they won't trash talking. Mike was like, "We gonna see you on the court, and we gonna handle it there." Yeah, there, but there I mean, from what I hear, he showed talked a lot of shit on that court, right? He talked a no, lot he of shit on the court, court in the game. game. On the court, on the court, Mike was oh, not he, off he, he the court. Video. But but no, nah, but you would never hear a sound bite with Michael. Mike would never get out there publicly saying something crazy about somebody. Mike was like. When we get on the court, it's all business. Mike saved all of his right. people for when he was on the hardwood. You never saw Magic. Mm-hmm. Um, you never saw Kareem. You never saw, you know, um, even Isaiah. You know, you never saw Isaiah and them talking. Like, you never saw Malone, Carl Malone, John Stockton, you know, Mark Price. You never saw me talking. You know, and, and no disrespect to none of the new players, but even the way that, 
the way these players move the fuck around from team to team nowadays, like this shit, that shit is crazy to me, bro. Like, oh, I don't want to be here no more. I want to be traded. Motherfucker. Shit. You just walk up to the owner of the team and say, hey, I want to be traded. You can get traded? Is that simple? It's that simple now. Because of one bad season. You know, like, because of one bad season. <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy, man. And see what you said about the music. To me, the music of today, the problem with the music of today, because some of this shit I like. I literally like some of this shit. But it took a while mm-hmm. for me to start liking certain things. It took a while. It was a period of time where I hated everything. I hated mm-hmm. everything. But now there's certain shit. The only problem I have is it all damn near sound the same. That's my only problem. It all damn near sound.